What's up GT gang? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Mojo and today we're doing part two of installing the 510 liter per hour Holly fuel system in my 06 Dodge Charger SRT8. Uh, if you guys didn't watch the last video, go ahead and check it out. I'll put it up right here. And if you guys are interested in Mopar content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel guys. We do this stuff all the time, constantly building engines or even just working on cars all the time. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys at the end. Okay, so I kept getting a cold solder joint and it's where um, basically you end up having like a very matte finish on your solder joint. I'm trying to get this to focus, but uh, I ended up figuring it out. I tinned it and then stripped back as much uh, or removed as much solder as I could and then put it on with some extra solder. Both of these are pretty decent solder joints. So I'm happy with this. I blew on it because it was extremely hot because this is all conductive. And I'm hoping that I did not damage anything. It looks like it's fine. So I'll wipe it down quick and we should be good. So it just snaps in like that. And we'll grab our level sending slide it over. Make sure that this pin is aligned. It should just oh there it goes. There it goes. And you should feel it'll if you go really slow you'll feel a movement or like almost a grinding. And that's the sweep making contact. That's your potentiometer. And uh, that's how you get your send your uh, your signal back to the gauge. So I'm going to strip these back at the end, and we'll get ready to crimp them onto these, and then we'll be good. All right, everybody, this step is pretty crucial. Uh, I'm very picky, and I have a very high standard. So what I do this: I cut off these butt connectors. Butt connectors are for noobs. Um, say what you want. Butt connectors are not my thing especially in cars or even in my fuel system. Not my, uh, not my go-to, okay? I don't wanna really talk crap about everybody that uses butt connectors, but not my thing. So as you can see, these wires are a lot smaller than these. This is probably like a 12 gauge and I wanna assume that this is like an 18 or a 20. It's really not a big deal. If anything, it'll be easier to solder. So we are back at it like a crack addict. We have the passenger side right here. I don't know where the cap for that went. Oh well. But we have our board right here. We're going to solder on the two wires. I just realized that I haven't taken out the other level sending unit. So looks like I'm going to the car. So I definitely thought that I just uh, recorded all of that. <laughs> well, what I did was um, not record that. But anyway, I basically did the exact same process. Cut out the butt connectors. Soldered the connections onto the level sensor as well as added them to uh, these two connectors down here, these two wires. So now that this is ready, we are ready to install the crossover tube and install these into the actual car. Okay, so now that we have uh, both sending units together, what I'm going to do, this is the crossover tube. I will be installing this. Uh, basically what I'm just gonna do is installed on the driver's side unit, slide it down, and push uh, the hose all the way to the other side. Pretty simple. And then I'll be able to set this one in with the, with the new gasket, slide it all the way across, and then we'll be able to attach the hose to the, uh, the passenger side. And should be good to go, and then we'll be ready for wiring. I don't know if I'm gonna do the wiring tonight. I think that'd be a pretty decent stopping point for the day. To do wiring at a different time considering the install was taking a bit longer than I thought. Recording takes pretty long. You have to stop, make sure you're recording everything as necessary. And I might not even be recording everything like I should. But that's the next step and we're gonna go ahead and do that. Shaka Look at that. Driver's side is installed. Um, the gaskets were fresh, 
so I don't really know how this is gonna go down um, fuel lines are gonna be really tight to run I don't know how I'm gonna run these fuel lines man um, that's gonna be a real pain in the butt I think what I'm gonna have to do is run them Oh, that's gonna suck. I gotta figure out what other people are doing for this setup because I can't I can't just run like a 90 up and then shoot across. I might be able to get away with that over there. But um a return system, I'm gonna have to have a fuel line right here. So that kind of sucks. Um like I don't feel anywhere where I can squeeze a fuel line. Maybe back there, but I mean that's tight. We'll see, I guess. I'll keep you guys posted. Insulation was pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you make sure, my gaskets were fairly new. I could tell that they were replaced when the last person did the fuel pump, so I did not uh, replace them. And they were a different style gasket. They weren't just some kind of ring. So I decided to use mine. It was more of a rectangular. It felt like it was in a seal better. But I put the lock ring on, uh, used a screwdriver and a hammer as a punch and hammer as well. And basically, like I took it off, I just installed it the same way. So pretty straightforward. Uh, I did want to mention that what I did do off camera, at least on without being mentioned, was I installed your fuel sock. It's basically a hydromat is what it's called. And you remove this blue cap, it snaps on in any orientation you want. I just did the short side facing the door and then the long side facing the uh, the passenger side pump so that being said i am ready to do the passenger side let's go ahead and get it all ready the hose has already ran through it my door just shut and yeah and then we'll basically be ready to wire i think i'll pack up for the night after i do that all right so we got the hydromat right here go ahead and open it up so we gotta remove this blue cap okay that's a little bit better so it'll sit like this in the car this tab faces forward so what i'm going to do is have the short and go towards the door which would be like this push it on and you'll feel it snap into place and we're good to go let's go ahead and throw it in okay so we have the hydromat installed and we need to install the crossover to aka this so I'm going to slide the hose clamp right there, slide on the hose onto the crossover, 3 8 inch barb fitting, and all it is is a Phillips. Make sure that that crossover tube doesn't kink up. There we go, it's pressed in. This is what it'll look like. Just like that, fuel out, there is no plug. So make sure you don't get a lot of dirt in there that's going directly into the fuel pump. That being said, let me know what you guys think. If anybody's done this before, where did you route your fuel lines? I'm doing dash 8AN with a return system. So I'll have one line that's going back to the, the tanks. So let me know. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support. You have been great to me. I mean, I'm trying my best to upload as much as I possibly can. I work roughly 70 hours a week, sometimes even more than that. So just bear with me, guys. I am trying so hard to work on this. I finally have everything for the engine. And as this video is getting made, it'll be a, this upcoming Friday. So about five days from this video is being shot, the engine is getting put together. So stay tuned for that, guys. I'm excited. We have the heads back. It's insane. Thank you so much for all the support. See you guys in the next one. Peace.